Mike Bond of USA Today Sports and MMA Junkie here on scene in Curitiba, Brazil for UFC 198. And I'm standing next to the newest member of MMA Junkie's reporting team, Fernanda Praches. Fernanda, UFC is back in Brazil. Uh, you can see the stadium behind us here where the event's going to happen on Saturday. When the UFC first returned to Brazil for UFC 134 in 2011, did you expect it to turn into this? You know, that was a huge event. There was some wild wins, Anderson Silva, Big Nog, Shogun, all that stuff. But did you expect a few years down the line you would be in a soccer stadium, 45,000 people, uh, you know, a huge lineup, multiple champions, future Hall of Famers, everything. Did you expect it to turn into this? I don't think anyone did. Like, it was a big question mark because... Um, the, the, it was like peak popularity for the UFC then, but there was this kind of like fringe interest then, you know, people were curious about it. And so it sold out in seconds, it was this major thing, but really we couldn't tell if this was something that was going to become a habit or like it was, it was going to become a sport that was actually embraced by uh, Brazil or if it was just going to be like a spark and it ended up becoming one of our like major things soccer and mma so um not like quite there with soccer yet i think it's going to take a while but it's become like a serious part of our culture i think already yeah and you know we know there's some issues with the economy and everything down here but do you feel stadium shows like this are something they could do routinely or is it something that you know this might be it for a little while at least um, I wouldn't say routine, routinely, I say I, it really depends on the names. Um, when you get Belfort and Anderson in the same card, to me that was like the major thing. Obviously Anderson didn't end up happening, but they put together such a strong card that I, I had actually said it before, like the day they get Anderson and Vitor together in the same card, that's the day we're going to do a stadium event, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, honestly, I don't, th I don't feel it would have the same pull with um, athletes that aren't as popular with the Brazilian audiences. So I wouldn't say it's a routine thing. Also, uh, the Curitiba pick was a very good one because, as you guys know, like this is one of the birthplaces of Brazilian uh, MMA, well, Vale Tudo back then. So this is kind of like it all came together to make this a major event but i don't think this is something that they can keep up with on a regular basis yeah very good and uh, you know for those who don't know anderson silva of course pulled from the card had to do get gallbladder surgery uh, out of the fight with uriah hall but still an incredible lineup top to bottom of course the main event fabricio verdum putting the heavyweight championship on the line against stipe miocic uh you know of course verdum was going to fight kane velasquez earlier this year fight fell apart and Verdum was briefly put in and then it got moved to this card. What do you think of this fight? Is, you know, is Verdum the right guy to headline this card, first of all? And do you think, uh, you know, he retains, do you think Stipe presents a challenge that he hasn't seen in this amazing winning streak he's had of late? Um, with, when it comes to like calling heavyweight fights, we all struggle with it, I guess, because there's always that power thing, like that factor that the fight can end at any minute. But having said that, um, I do feel like Verdu Miocic doesn't really have the tools to surprise Verdum. That's my issue with it. So that's why I would uh, say Verdum is the favorite. And um, but yeah, I mean, in the division, he's he would be like to me the obvious choice. Uh, obviously, Overeem now uh, also a good name. And I um, oh, forgot the first question. No, just do you think he was the right? Uh, this was the right fight to headline. Oh. Yeah, uh, for, of course, for Verdum in Curitiba, it made perfect sense because obviously he used to train at Chichiboxi. It's how like he got his start in MMA. Obviously, he had like this huge uh, jiu-jitsu background. And um, so, yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense because he's a champion. So and the heavyweight champion on the list, like the most popular division. So, of course, we talk about Vitor and Anderson as like the household names in Brazil. But Verdum has certainly made himself very popular, not only uh, because of his like fighting skills that are undeniable, but he's like this funny guy, very charismatic, very good with the audience, does a lot of media. So all those things turn uh, Verdum into a really popular guy and to me the right guy to be here doing this fight now. Yeah and a lot of other names on the card but I feel like the person who's got the most attention this week is Cyborg Justino. Uh, you know the Invicta champion coming over a long long awaited UFC debut. It's finally happening and she's been received very very well it seems. Uh, how excited are you to finally see Cyborg in the octagon? Do you feel you know this is happening too late? Is it happening at the right time? How do you feel? It's happening at the right time. I mean 
first of all, there's the division issue. She actually, we talked to her briefly about it and she said it like, we talked about negotiations and stuff, but her division just doesn't exist, right? So everything that we were talking about, Rhonda, Holly, whatever, she just couldn't make the weight. Now she's trying it on, doing the catch weight, doing her debut here, where she's from. So I think like it all came together in the perfect way, really. It's the perfect storm for Cyborg to debut right now. So I, I think it's a, it's a good time. And I was actually, I don't want to say surprised, uh, but intrigued by the sheer amount of attention that she got. Because it's this super stacked card, and she kind of like stole the show, especially uh, in the last two weeks. So it's been very interesting to watch. I'm very curious to see uh, not only her debut, but how things evolve from there. Because we still obviously don't know what's going to happen with the weight and the divisions and whatnot. So I'm very curious. Yeah, and Leslie Smith talking to her at Media Day, very relaxed, very laid back. Uh, I guess I'll just ask a simple yes or no question. Does Leslie Smith have a chance in this fight? <laughs> uh, that's uh, strong of uh, not having a chance, but nah, not really. I think it's kind of like, it's pretty one-sided at this point. We've seen stranger things happening, but yeah, I think Cyborg is a heavy, heavy favorite there. Indeed. And final thing, uh, any other fight, any other fighters you're very intrigued, intrigued to see on this card? For me, I'm really looking forward to see John Lineker fighting again at Bantamweight against Rob Font, a guy who's on a really long winning streak, looked very impressive. So that's kind of my fight to watch on the undercard. But what do you think? Any other fights really stick out to you? Um, uh, Damian Maya, actually, because it's, to, it's a, first of all, it's a great matchup like classic striker versus grappler and like an amazing striker versus an amazing grappler. And I'm very curious because if he wins, it's going to be hard to deny him a title shot like in the near future. So I'm curious about that one. And Warley Alves, like undefeated Brazilian prospect, tough Brazil winner, a total beast, a master of like guillotine chokes. He's like a very, he's very interesting to watch. And uh, I think we might just expect great things from him. So I'm curious to see how he uh, fares against uh, Brian Barberina, who doesn't seem to have a problem with putting undefeated guys <laughs> to rest. So we'll see about that. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of great fights on Saturday. A stack card top to bottom. We'll have coverage all night long at MMAJunkie.com. Read Fernanda's great work that she's done since joining the site. It's all there. And uh, thank you so much for watching. We'll have all the coverage.